Hi. Hi, Maria. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. So we have Maria here, which is one of the um, experts. And I just wanted to start off by asking you so you can let people know what what is it? What is your experience in, in the education field? Well, I have quite a bit of experience in the education field. I uh, started out as a teacher. I taught quite a few grades. I can't remember right now, but I taught the younger grades and, and uh, the older grades as well. I was a literacy coach at the same school that I taught for five years. Did that. That was a wonderful experience. I was able to help teachers um, with curriculum, with modeling in the classrooms and, and anything that had to do with literacy. And the last uh, five years I've been in publishing. So I am an editor at Learning A to Z. And um, that's been an experience all on its own. How about you, Natalie? What's uh, wh what's your educational background? Well, let's see. So I've been teaching for about 12 years. I um, I worked for Broward County. I started uh, in, in a Title I school and taught first grade, which I have to say I'm very thankful because that has truly taught me the foundations of teaching a child how to read. So I was blessed to have that experience. Then I actually uh, got transferred to a school uh, in Coconut Creek that loops. So you teach, uh, you have the same kids for two years and you travel with them. So for example, I taught fourth and fifth. So I had them for uh, fourth grade and then I traveled with them to fifth. So my time there, I, let's see, I taught third grade retention. I taught ESC pullout. I taught ESOL students. I taught students in uh, the RTI process. And lastly, my last eight years, I taught fourth and fifth grade and intermediate. I also had the privilege of teaching some workshops over the summer, thanks to you, uh, teaching Lucy Calkins and, and other uh, reading strategies and other things that the that the uh, county was offering during the summer for teachers. I got to work a little bit in, in that field, which definitely helped me learn and grow. So I think being being kind of doing many different types of grade levels and, and experiences has definitely helped me in the classroom be definitely be more successful. Yeah, I would imagine, you know, the, the more experience you have, the better, you know, we're going to do, uh, you know, educating our kids. And in full disclosure, Natalie and I are sisters, so we totally know what each other has done has done in the past. And we've worked with each other many times before. I try to bring her on as much as I can to things that I'm doing and, and vice versa, because that experience is, um, is super valuable. So one of the things, or what we're going to talk about today, really, um, Natalie, you're going to love, especially now that school is starting out mm -hmm. again, is what makes a successful literacy block? So what do we include in this literacy block? One of the things I definitely try my hardest to do is to make sure I am consistent with, with the reading groups and my reading block. I definitely try to model a lot for my students. I try to show them what, what does it look like when I come across struggling words? How do I think through? What do I do when I didn't understand what I just read? Also, I, I, I am a firm believer that it, it takes a village. I, I think team planning, working with your team, collaboratively meeting with your team, discussing data. Hey, I noticed you you taught main idea and details. I noticed your class rocked it. What is it that you did differently? And I try to observe as much as I can and learn from my peers to help me grow so I can help my, my students grow. I definitely think that, you know, being able to collaborate together through uh, team planning, uh, it, it has to be crucial, especially I would imagine now during this harder time with um, kids having to be quarantined for a, a period of time or teachers having to be quarantined, that you really need to, to count on each other and lean on each other uh, for support. I, I can't imagine how, you know, you can do this in isolation. So is so that like you said, that's the challenging part. You know, a lot of it with reading groups or, or even math or any, any subject that you teach, consistency is 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 the key. And they are not progressing like we would like, and they're not retaining the information we would like. And children are coming in working below grade level and not at the at the expectation of of the county or the state. So we definitely have, on top of all the challenging factors that we have always faced as educators. This has definitely uh, been one of the most challenging, I, I, I think, uh, facing with children and ourselves as educators to not only us to be successful, but also help our children become successful. 
So what are your thoughts on assessments? How have you guys handled that as a school? I know it's, it's yeah, assessments our favorite. Are our topic, right? <laughs> I, I honestly, in my classroom, I try so hard to not even bring up uh, the FSA in my classroom. Just the thought of it, my students, we, we all like, ugh. whenever I'm grading anything, I don't just write mark an X and mark it incorrect. I really try to dig deep and look at what, are they having trouble with? So I can guide them and reteach them and, and re, rethink about how I taught things because they haven't mastered it that way to help them be a little bit more successful. Yeah, and it's hard. It's it, it's there's a lot going on, and I know at schools nowadays there's so many different resources. I know you have some district mandated resources. So sometimes you have teach you have I'm sorry school mandated resources. So how do you fit it all in? You know, you would you have 90 minutes a, a block of time for your for your literacy block. How, what do you do? How do you fit it in? You know, I could tell you some of the things that I used to do, but I would love to know, like, some of the things that, that you do to try to fit it in. Every year, different programs work for different kids, depending on the class that I have. So it kind of depends on my students, the overall culture of my classroom, the diversity. And I, I try to, you know, build a library that definitely... Um, has a little bit of everything, lots of different genres and fiction and nonfiction and poems. And, and you know, one of the things that's important too is I try to have books that, you know, look like my students. I was watching a, a, this webinar was great with a, with a uh, professor from UCLA and he was talking about culturally diverse and appropriate materials to have those at hand. And one of the things that he mentioned is that we're not putting the diverse literature that our students need in their hands. And we need to do a better job with that, you know, nationwide. And, and one thing that stuck to me that he mentioned was that books need to be windows, mirrors, and sliding doors to the world around our students. By windows, he meant that the students look out and learn about people that are different than them. They see a world that is different from their own to help them better understand and value others. He also said mirrors. Mirrors are where students are able to see themselves reflected in the books that they're reading on a daily basis or the language um, is reflected uh, or similar to what they hear at home or with their families or in their neighborhood. And then finally, he also said sliding doors. And this one was a little bit new to me. I didn't know really what he meant by that, but he meant that it opens up passageways into new worlds and new realities for kids. So, so a lot of times, you know, especially when I first started teaching, I didn't take that into consideration when I was building my library. So one of the things, um, Natalie, that I saw one time and it really stuck to me was we were in a classroom and the teacher was reading a book about um, this little town in, in, in Mexico and um, talking about, you know, the town or whatever. And this little boy in her class who had just come from Mexico not too long ago, like his face lit up and mm -hmm. she had mentioned that his face had never lit up before like that before. And so she asked him, you know, you know, why his, you know, he was just happy. And he says that that the, the little, you know, boy in the in the book reminded him of him and his family. And I think it helps the children kind of understand each other a little bit more. You know, for example, I know in, you know, in, in some in some countries, you know, they say, oh, you don't look at me in my eyes when we're talking. You know, it's disrespectful where to us, my dad was like, look me in my eyes when I'm talking, you know. So I think it helps children understand each other and realize that differences are okay. And that's, you know, it makes us who we are. So I think definitely helping build that environment and build your library um, definitely will help the students kind of feel more comfortable in your classroom. And it doesn't happen obviously overnight, you know, and, and going to the library, checking out some books, you know, to make those connections with those kids. I definitely, you're absolutely right. Definitely. Um, makes a world of a difference. But I do think one of the most important things is probably believing that every kid could learn, you know, having the, the ability to believe, okay, they can learn. Maybe they may not learn at the same pace as, as, as the, the child next to them, or they may have some other things going on that, you know, prohibit them from sometimes getting to that full learning experience that they need to get to, but all kids can learn. So finding a way into our children, getting to know each and every child and finding what works best for them, finding the best strategies, the best scaffolds to help them in any situation. I know we're talking about a literacy block now here, but it could happen in any situation. But I've seen 
wonders when teachers truly, truly believe in their kids, the kids pick up on that. They know and they start believing in themselves. And that right there is one of the biggest hurdles because like you said, Natalie, you could have the best lesson, you could have the best book, you could have the best curriculum. If a child doesn't believe he or she can learn or if a child is not comfortable in a class, that that child is not going to learn. So I think that that's one of the biggest things. If I could also say one thing too, as a fourth and fifth grade teacher, one of the things too is, you know, it's just take, you know, take a day at a time, you know, and, and the kids are learning and do the best that you can. And, and most importantly, believe in yourself. And I, you know, one of the things that I really, really try to do is when I end my day is I, I try to reflect And I think as a teacher, just like you expect your students to grow and set goals and believe in themselves, you kind of, you know, it's important that you do those things for yourself as well and and not overwhelm yourself. Just take it one day at a time. And at the end of the day, things will get done. You know, don't don't do things to just do things because your principal is mandating them, you know, do do what you can with the resources and the time that you have. and, And the children will grow and learn, you know, but most importantly, like you said, is creating that happy, welcoming environment. And sometimes that will make the biggest difference.